Oh, hi guys, it's Howard again. I was talking to a friend the other day who follows the channel and he said, what do you have against SLR cameras? I said, what do you mean? And he claimed that I had never reviewed even one SLR. I pointed out that I had reviewed one, the Exacta Verax, but I guess one out of 21 videos isn't a very good balance. I do believe rangefinder cameras have far more variety and are more interesting, but I do have a couple of interesting SLRs, so let's review those over the next two videos. The most interesting and complex by far is my Zeiss Contaflex Super B. Zeiss introduced the Contaflex 1 in 1953 and produced some 10 models between that model and my Super B, which was released in 1963, 10 years later. There were two subsequent models, the Super BC, 1965, and the S, 1968 before the range ended. The only real difference was that the CDS metering cells replaced the selenium cells in the Super B. Other than that, the difference was were very minor. Models from 1956 could take a range of supplementary lenses, 35mm, 85mm and 115mm. I'll explain how this works later. OK, let's have a look at this complex beast. We'll start on the front. So we've got Zeiss icon on the uh, nameplate there, the selenium cell, and a little window to illuminate the, uh, the apertures within the viewfinder. Also on the bottom, we've got a little tab. And if we press that tab in, we can remove the front element. So by removing the front element, we can uh, then fit in the other lenses, the other auxiliary lenses that were, you could get for it. And that was the 35mm wide angle, 85mm portrait lens, and a 115mm, 115mm sort of short telephoto. And uh, that all worked very well. Uh, the Zeiss were very serious about the Contaflex range of cameras. Uh, the range of accessories and filters and proxar lenses and all sorts of things you could get to them was just about endless. They, they looked on this range of cameras as their top of the range at the time and they were, it was a very serious system and they were well invested into it. They later replaced it with the Contour X, which was an amazing bit of gear, but uh, anyhow, I don't have one of those, so <laughs> we won't get into that. But I'll just put this lens back in. It only goes one way because it's a, it's a bayonet mount. Okay, so there we are. And also on the bottom here, there is a, uh, a, a time delay to give you about eight to ten seconds to rush around and take a selfie. Okay, so you just pull that across after you've cocked the shutter. All right, we'll get around to the top and have a look at the barrel. On the, so we've got two plastic tabs on the uh, and the front ring is the shutter speeds, click stops, all the way around from B to a five hundredth. Now you'd notice I didn't actually go to B then because I couldn't. It's locked out because this camera was designed to be used automatically, and you'll notice there's a little red A down here and a little tab. And uh, as long as it's on the A, uh, bulb mode is locked out. I guess you wouldn't be using that in an automatic mode anyhow. If I move that around, if I, there's a plastic tab on the bottom, you've got a grip just there. That's the other side of the little tab. So if you push that in and rotate it, you can get around to manual uh, apertures. And at that point, you can put it on B but it's locked out in automatic mode. Now you might have noticed there's a little flashmatic symbol on the top here, and this has flashmatic scales for two of the lenses, the 50 and the 35. So if you're using a flash, you can bring that around the other way, and you get into the range, the scale for the 50mm uh, lens, and around here we've got the 35mm lens. Uh, so as long as you know the uh, guide number of your uh, flash, you can use the flashmatic system in this camera. All right, it's locked back into automatic mode. 
behind there we've got the uh, depth of field scale and the focusing ring now obviously whoops obviously this camera because it takes auxiliary lens on the front you can't remove any of this it's a fixed lens single lens reflex camera with auxiliary lenses okay on the left here we've got a nice rewind knob to rewind the film we've also got a film reminder whole series of different types of film uh, film for flash negative color uh, daylight uh, you know it also reminds there's a lot there were a lot more film types around back those days than really exist these days uh, I, you know there were all sorts of specialist films around then these days it's mainly just color and black and white uh, also here we've got the uh, the metering scale now those two red segments move depending on a range of things uh, as you can see at the moment it's it's only showing between 8 and 22 but uh, my metering system doesn't work so something's wrong internally but if the metering system does work to set the ASA there's a little arrow around here little arrow head and to move and you've got your ASA around the barrel there a bit hard to see but they are all there and uh, to change it you've got to pull this little tab back and then you can change your ASA accordingly so we'll put on 400 now this also moves and springs back so if, if you it's basically one stop of backlighting adjustment so you can take a reading then you can take it around and that'll give you one one stop of backlighting adjustment which isn't a, isn't a great deal but uh, it's better than nothing or if it gets a bit cloudy all of a sudden you can push it around uh, on top here we've got the post for the, uh, the flash neatly put on front of the cold shoe so the cable doesn't have to go far and this hole here it's not in the manual uh, but it's set up for something to click into it. It's got a sprung spring, a little round spring this side and that side. So obviously one or some of the accessories actually clipped into that hole. On the right we've got the uh, film advance shutter button which will take a, a cable release. Now for those who don't know what a cable release looks like, this is a cable release screws in the there when you press this it activates the shutter and that's for use on a tripod uh, the only other thing here is the film advance that has to be set manually so you get your fingernail and set the little white spot there to the start of the film take it around to there and it actually it actually counts down So that's how that works. We've got nice little tabs on either side. Now on the back we've got the uh, viewfinder window. Now in the viewfinder you've got two focusing aids. You've got a, a uh, Fresnel circle in the middle which uh, shatters if it's out of focus. So you focus until that comes clear. And there's also a vertical split image rangefinder point as well so it's there's no reason why you can't focus this camera very accurately we got the Zeiss icon again on the back and made in Germany all right let's take the bottom off now before we do that you might notice over here there's an R there's no rewind button to press but by rotating that to there that works on a mechanism inside that depresses against the uh, and releases the drive mechanism so uh, then you can rewind your film and then to take the, the back off the whole back comes off like that uh, the rewind mechanism 
whoops, the rewind mechanism is down in here. This activates a little thing there which presses up and presses on this here which then releases the drive mechanism. Now there's a lot going on inside this camera. It's a truly mechanical camera so get a load of this. There's all sorts of bits and pieces going on here. It's a complex bit of gear and uh, it sort of it almost works in two stages. Uh, when you press the shutter, the first thing that happens, the aperture stops down to the aperture, and then it uh, then the, sh the separate shutter takes the, sh the shutter uh, takes the shot. So it's it's a bit of a two stage process, but it does work. It was it was very complex. So I tried to achieve a lot uh, back at that time and. Uh, the Germans seem to tend to over-engineer things. And I'll just put the back back on. Okay, right back in business. So, basically, a very complex but very capable camera. Uh, if you can get one with the meter working. Uh, it, that would be that would be excellent, but it doesn't require the meter to work to use it. it it's it's a little bit cumbersome. It's it's not quite as ergonomically friendly as some of the uh, later cameras, but it's it's a superb piece of German engineering. It's a it's a good looking camera, and uh, really, uh, if you can find a nice one, if you're interested in this sort of thing. Uh, the super B, uh, the I'd be tempted if you can find one with a working selenium meter. I think that's probably than the later ones because the later ones, because they required mercury batteries and that, the BC and the S, um, there's a good chance the wiring stuffed in, in them and everything because people left mercury batteries in cameras and the mercury batteries went flat, they seem to infect all the wiring. So that's it, uh, the Zeiss Icon Contaflex Super B. Well look, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please like and subscribe. It uh, costs nothing and uh, helps the channel. Uh, so if you're still watching, thanks and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.